G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading a humorous old newspaper article about Yowies from 1895, so we'll get into it. This was published in the Bird O Freedom on Saturday, the 2nd of November, 1895, titled Words of Wisdom by the Owl, Short Lessons in Natural History. The Yahoo, his haunts and habits. The Yahoo is a weird, unearthly beast. People who have had interviews with Yahoos vary somewhat in their descriptions of the creature. Some say that the Yahoo has horns and a tail and hoofs like a bullock and is covered all over with red hair. Others assert the Yahoo is more of a cross between a gorilla and a man. When I was a small, bad boy and went to a little bush school way back in the ranges, I learned all about the Yahoo. None of the kids had ever seen one personally, but they all held firmly to the beast's existence. I begin to think now that our fathers and mothers rather encouraged us to believe in the Yahoo. It helped to keep us at home in the evenings it made us more religious, more amendable to parental control, and induced us to grow up better citizens, and to keep more in the straight and narrow path within easy QE of the Sunday schools and Bible classes. There have been many times in my own personal history when I would have gone snake hunting or catapult shooting on Sunday mornings were it not for a shifty sort of idea that the Yahoo kept an eye open for juvenile Sabbath breakers. It was popularly supposed in our district that whenever a Yahoo got a human being into his long hairy arms, he bore them off to a cave in some inaccessible part of the mountains, gaily cracked their tympanums with a sharp edged stone and suck their brains out through their ears. Whenever a shepherd or a traveller disappeared in the ranges, we used to regard him as one butchered to make the Yahoo's holiday. The school missus never gave us any object lessons on the Yahoo, but when the inspector came around, if he had put questions to us on the subject, we could have told him more about it than either the elephant or the reindeer, illustrated diagrams of which were hung upon the walls of the schoolroom. It might have been somewhere about 1877 that a Yahoo came to reside in our electorate. The first to see him was a teamster who had lost a yoke of bullocks and was scouring the mountains for them. The teamster came back to town in a very excited condition and reported that he had encountered a genuine Yahoo in a certain deep, dark, lonely gully just about nightfall. As nearly as the teeps I could judge, owing to a business engagement which suddenly called him away from that part of the country, the Yahoo in question had four horns, a hairy hide and other embellishments. Owing to the fact that the man had been drinking heavily beforehand, doubts were thrown upon his story. But a week or so afterwards, a selector who had lost a broodmare dropped across the Yahoo a little higher up the gully and came home immediately afterwards. Several people who had lost things saw the Yahoo in succession and reported the occurrence. At length, the police went out in the dark, deep, lonely gully and found the Yahoo's camp. Also the hides of several missing beasts from which the Yahoo had carefully cut the brands. A broken halter relating to the broodmare which had been lost and a few head of livestock were discovered further on where the Yahoo was keeping them for future reference. The Yahoo got away from the police on that occasion but he was captured about a month later, tried at the Assizes, and sent to Berrima for seven years on the charge of horse stealing. His name was Ryan.
the end. That's a classic that I like how they say that they thought as kids that the Yahoo used to um, crack their tympanums, which is their ear, part of their ear, and suck out their um, brains through their ears. And then the story that they said about the guy being Ryan, who was the horse stealer and cattle stealer, there's a bit of truth to that. I've read a couple of stories where there's two of them I've read. One guy dressed up in a suit he made out of uh, goat's hide and had horns and all, and he was scaring off uh, a cattlemen to steal their cattle. And another one was a guy who made a suit out of possum skin and was doing the same thing to steal a cattle. It's very interesting. Okay, that's it from me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.